Hello and welcome to Beyond Today, the program that addresses the future of our community through conversations with people who are working today for a better tomorrow. In our last program, we talked about making government more efficient, accessible, and responsive to citizen needs. Today, we'll be exploring ways to cultivate prosperity by increasing economic opportunities for our citizens. I'm Ray Charmonte, your host for Beyond Today and Director of Comprehensive Planning and Community Design for the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission. We are very fortunate to have with us today two people who have unique perspectives on cultivating prosperity. With us is Stuart Rogel. Stuart is the Executive Director of the Tampa Bay Partnership, which is a regional development organization dedicated to promoting and marketing the six counties in the Tampa Bay region. The goal of the Tampa Bay Partnership is to attract new and expanding businesses to the Tampa Bay area. Stuart has also served as a market and financial feasibility advisor. Thank you for being with us today, Stuart. Good to be here. In our vision for the future, our citizens said they want to cultivate prosperity by attracting new businesses and creating better employment opportunities. I'd like to ask you, Stuart, how do you define prosperity? Well, uh, there's a couple of ways of defining economic prosperity, but essentially it is providing those opportunities for our citizens here in this community to be able to benefit and take advantage from the quality of life that we all experience. Uh, and we define that at the Tampa Bay Partnership through jobs and providing the kinds of jobs that uh, will provide an improved lifestyle. And uh, we generally call those value-added jobs. They provide uh, increased skills opportunities and increased uh, employment and income opportunities. When we talk about the Tampa Bay economy, I guess, what, what are the high points of our economy? What are the areas that we feel or the partnership feels need to be made stronger? Well, the Tampa Bay area in general is a, a very um, fast-growing area of Florida, like all of Florida is. And if we did nothing, we would see people who would come to this area every day um, because of the, the quality of life and the climate. Um, the challenge is really to identify those sectors that we think uh, will really improve the economic conditions. And so we focus in on those jobs or those industries that create jobs um, in the financial and business services, in manufacturing, particularly in the electronics ma manufacturing areas, and the medical device manufacturing areas, um, and other kinds of industries that are either moving to the area now and producing high value jobs, or we think have a propensity to move down here. And those are some of the sectors that are very strong here in Tampa Bay. Do you? Uh I guess being there's different counties involved in the, in the partnership, is there a difference in the type of jobs that each county desires to attract, or, or is it fairly uniform? The, the, there's, a, there's a significant difference throughout the region, and the, one of the strengths of our region is its diversity. Uh, it's diversity economically, socially, culturally, um, geographically, and um, we like to use that as a strength, and it really is, because when we go out and market the region outside this area, we really tell them, tell companies that if you're thinking about Florida and you're thinking about the southeast, there's probably something for everybody here in, in Tampa Bay. So each one of the six county partners um, is really uh, to looking at different opportunities for their own uh, counties. But there are some commonalities that uh, fit all of us. And, uh, and that's what, what the regional organization tries to bring to the table, the ability to, to match the different needs of the different counties at uh, a, a regional approach and provide some value and provide services to each one of the counties so that they can individually uh, pursue their own goals and, uh, and pursue their own community's economic development. I know it's uh, interesting that the particular six counties that, it, that are part of the partnership, was there much discussion on which counties should be involved in that? Because there's many different ways to define the Tampa Bay area, and sure. this is kind of a different one than I'm accustomed to seeing. Well, that's a good question, and, and yes, there is, there has been and there is discussion about which counties ought to be part of, quote, the Tampa Bay region. Um, our alliance is really a marketing alliance. and. Uh, uh, each one of the communities uh, came to the decision to join the Regional Marketing Alliance independently. Um, there's some natural statistical and perhaps geographical boundaries that uh, help to define that. We're in three metropolitan, or the, the region, the six counties, uh, compose three metropolitan statistical areas um, uh, for statistical purposes. 
geographically, there's always uh, a county like Polk County, there's always been a connection back to Hillsborough County um, and, and Sarasota County, Manatee Counties. Many people live in Sarasota or Manatee County and work in Hillsborough and Pinellas or vice versa, working in Hillsborough and Pinellas and, and uh, working uh, or living in Hillsborough and Pinellas and commuting to Sarasota and Manatee for jobs. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons, but essentially we're a marketing alliance and each one of the communities um, made their own decision to join this organization. So it wasn't so much on statistics, but it was on a desire for the different counties to be included uh, yes. in the partnerships mm -hmm. efforts. Exactly. There's a lot of discussion, I guess, about uh, <coughs> service-oriented jobs, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, whether we should be pursuing them. How, how do you feel about that? Is that something that's wise to go after? or? Well, the whole economy of the United States is changing. And um, as it changes more towards a service-oriented uh, economy, we're seeing that the, the salary levels and wage levels in the service economies, particular sectors of the service economy, um, equal to or greater than some of the uh, wage levels in the manufacturing area. Um, so there's, there is always the debate as to whether to pursue, continue to pursue manufacturing where you're producing a product and exporting it out to other areas or to pr provide uh, uh, service opportunities, uh, service industries to provide opportunities for employment. We balance it out in, in, in our marketing. We're, we're looking at companies that are, um, that are business and financial service oriented kinds of companies and fit that kind of category, but we're look also looking at some manufacturers and uh, the challenge is to get enough of a, of a, a balance of, of different industries in the region so that um, you can grow and you can deal with different cycles that different industries uh, uh, have when one industry might be in, an, in an, uh, a growth cycle, another industry may be a flatter, uh, may actually be in a cycle of decline, so we want to try to have a real a balanced economy in this region. And so that includes a combination of manufacturing concerns, which we actively promote to, and also includes a combination of service-oriented companies, particularly in the, the higher wage areas that uh, we are also actively mm -hmm. promoting to. I think sometimes, you know, speaking of the service-oriented economy, we assume in Florida maybe that we have a lot more than other parts of the mm -hmm. country. But I think what you're saying is we're not that different, or, or do we depend more on the service-oriented economy? We, we did a little, an analysis recently of businesses um, in the Tampa Bay region to find out exactly um, what kind of businesses were here and what were their characteristics. We employed um, Dr. David Birch, who has a company called Cognetics out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he's involved with Massachusetts Institute of Technology to give us some of the answers. And what we learned is that um, uh, we are not, the Tampa Bay area is not that much different than a lot of other uh, regions in the country. Um, we don't think that might have been the case 10 years ago, but uh, uh, where we might have had more dependence on service-oriented companies. But as I mentioned, the, 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 the nation as a whole is moving towards a service economy. And basically, in terms of the types of industries, we're, we're uh, not much different than the rest of the region have a little less emphasis on manufacturing uh, than maybe the Northeast or the Midwest or the West Coast of uh, California might have, um, uh, but uh, very similar characteristics in terms of the types of companies we have mm -hmm. here in Tampa Bay. Do you feel that there's a certain opportunity that we've been overlooking here, a certain area of industries that we haven't tapped into as much as the partnership might like to? Not so much in industries as there are certain um, needs that we must continue to focus on in economic development. Uh, one of those in particular is the educational system. Uh, and, and it's both in the primary school system and also in the area of, of workforce training. Um, we are constantly, constantly challenged and as our economy changes uh, and changes rapidly now, we're constantly challenged. And, in educating and training our residents so that they can be employable uh, to those industries that are currently here and to industries that are coming in the future. And I think that's an area that as a, as a region and really as a state uh, we need to focus on and make certain that we're providing the best available uh, training and education opportunities that we can. 
I'm sure the partnership obviously feels there's an advantage in partnering with the other counties. Yes. Uh, how do you see that, I guess, or how can you describe that advantage compared to kind of the idea of going it alone or going Hillsborough County going separately? Well, I think it's a resource issue uh, as much as anything else. Um, for six counties to attempt to go it alone, uh, none of them are really uh, have the, the sufficient resources to successfully uh, compete against other regions in the country and around the world. Uh, we know our competition is finding ways to join forces at the regional level, at the metropolitan level, to promote and to market. And if we don't do that, we're not going to be as competitive uh, as um, other regions are, and uh, we're going to fall behind. So by being able to combine six counties together, you're able to leverage the resources of each one of them. Uh, you're able to increase the, the amount of dollars you have available for outside marketing. And there are strength in numbers. In, in the Tampa Bay region, there's 3.1 million people. That makes us the uh, second largest uh, region in Florida, behind Southeast Florida, um, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, and the uh, third largest in the, United or in the uh, Southeast United States. Uh, with Atlanta and, and Miami, the Miami Southeast Florida area being uh, right uh, ahead of us. So there's strength in numbers and we can pull that together by working with six counties and, and utilizing their resources and, and, and their, their market strength. I guess the 3.1 million you talk about is the population of the partnerships area then? Yes, 3.1 million people in the six counties in the partnership uh, area. We talk about prosperity, and I guess maybe you can tell us how prosperity breeds more prosperity. I think sometimes that's not evident to the average citizen how all this has an effect on their lives. Well, I, I, I liken it back to quality of life, and, and really um, the challenge is we're building a community here that uh, I think we are all quite proud of. This is a wonderful place to live. Um, and the more prosperous we all are at every level, um, the more we have the opportunity to take advantage of those kind of quality of life opportunities. So um, everybody, I think, has a, has a personal goal or a family goal in the back of their mind to do a little bit better and uh, have a little bit more for their family and themselves when the day is done. And, and the only way you can do that is by continuing to grow a community, not just physically by building new buildings and new roads and sewers and what have you, but to continue to bring the kinds of jobs and the kinds of that require the kinds of skills that improve you individually as well as economically. All right. Thank you. Uh, when we return from a short break, we will talk further about how we can cultivate prosperity in our community. The Hillsborough County Bicycle Advisory Committee. Make Hillsborough County a place where riding a bicycle is a safe, convenient, enjoyable, and accepted mode of travel. The Bicycle Advisory Committee was established in 1977 to advise multimodal transportation planning efforts. The Bicycle Advisory Committee makes recommendations concerning safety, security, and regulations pertaining to bicycles. In an effort to make bicycles safe, the Bicycle Advisory Committee makes recommendations to add bike lanes when roads are improved, looks for off-road bike paths, sharing with skaters and joggers, and influencing the future. The Bicycle Advisory Committee advises the Hillsborough County Metropolitan Planning Organization. For more information about the Bicycle Advisory Committee, call the Metropolitan Planning Organization at 272-5940. Every week for the past four years, Stephanie has read stories to a room full of Savannah, Georgia preschoolers. Every week, the look on the children's faces is priceless. The love that Stephanie feels from every child has made her life a whole lot brighter. Even though Stephanie has never even seen their faces. To see how you can help in your community, call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. Your 
vote is your voice. If you don't register and vote, your voice will not be heard. Welcome back to Beyond Today. I'm your host, Ray Charmonti, and we've been discussing ways to cultivate prosperity in our community. Joining me today is Jim Clark, President and CEO of the Tampa Hillsboro Convention and Visitors Association. Jim has guided the association through opening and promotion of, of uh, Tampa's Convention Center, the Florida Aquarium, and the area's rapidly growing cruise market. Jim has also been instrumental in securing the NCAA Final Four for Tampa Bay in 1999. Thank you, Jim, for being on the show. Nice to be here. I'd like to talk to you about what the economic impact of tourism is in the Tampa Bay area. Sometimes I think we're not sure. Well, I, Ray, I can tell you what it is in Hillsborough County. And since we bleed so many visitors across the bay between Hillsborough and Pinellas County, we'll just look at Hillsborough County. Visitor spending in Hillsborough County is roughly $1.4 billion, with a B, billion dollars per year. Uh, over 40,000 people either work full-time in the visitor industry or in a full-time equivalent job here. And we have 8 million people who visit us a year, 4 million of those who stay overnight. That's quite a bit. It's a lot of money and it's a lot of jobs in the community. It's probably one of the second largest employers right behind the Port Authority, which uh, the Port generates about 70,000 permanent full-time jobs. Have you ever done a comparison between Hillsborough County and in a typical metropolitan area of that size for tourism? Do we tend to be more of a tourist area than most cities of 900,000. We do. If you compare our population base with some cities of similar size, cities of about a million or, or, or so people, we're right up there. Now, especially when you combine the two areas, Tampa and uh, Hillsborough County and the, and the uh, Pinellas County area, St. Petersburg and Clearwater, we're one of the top destinations in the country. We tend to rate the amount of money that's spent for each visitor who comes here and the amount of time they spend here is much more than it is a lot of other segments of the, of, uh, of the country. For example, a lot of people don't know, but visitors pay 25% of the sales taxes that we collect most of our money on here in the Tampa Bay area are paid for by visitors. And that's a chunk of our local tax base being supported by visitors. Do you think there's a conflict between pursuing tourism and other parts of the economy, or that can they work together to complement each other? I think they generally work very much hand in hand. Um, as a general rule, most people who move a business to an area or who make a decision to do business in an area often have visited that place first as a visitor or have visited that place uh, first as a, as a person coming to a convention. Uh, a good example was in, uh, when Channel, I believe it was Channel 28 was for sale. Um, the Super Bowl had been in Tampa in 1991. Prior to that time, the station had been on the market for a relatively long period of time without any buyers. Right after the Super Bowl was here, the station was bought within 30 days. When the sellers of the station asked why, people said, we came here for the Super Bowl, we saw the area, we saw it was a good place to invest in. As I mentioned before, I think it's also important to recognize that we are one of the seven states in the country that does not have a state income tax. And the reason we don't have state income tax in Florida is because we have such a strong sales tax base. If you take away tourism out of our economy, you take away 25 percent of the tax base and that would really weaken the area. Do you feel it, the tourism industry here has got to be different than other parts of Florida? Uh, and I, I have to compare us with Orlando because it's talked about so much, but uh, there it seems to have one driving force, I guess, to the tourism industry, whereas here I see it more fragmented. Is that the case? And if it is, what, how should we competing, be competing with areas like that? Because we are very different, in my opinion. Well, you can look at the Orlando area and compare it to the Tampa Bay area in two ways. First of all, the Orlando area is not only the largest destination in the state of Florida, it's not only the largest destination in the United States, it's the largest destination in the entire world. We're much more typical, if you take us out of that set and look at us more as a city in a metropolitan area, we're much more typical of most areas. And we have a lot to offer. Fragmented? Yes, we are in some degree. But we're, we're, although we may be somewhat fragmented, we don't have the driving force of the Disney and the driving force of Universal, we also have partners who cooperate more with each other. If you go to Orlando, you have Disney and you have Universal and they are at loggerheads with each other. Here, Busch Gardens is a cooperative partner with the Florida Aquarium. The Florida Aquarium is a cooperative partner with the Museum of Science and Industry, who's a cooperative partner with Lowry Park Zoo, and you find a lot more small alliances being built. 
you have to build those small alliances to hang together. You're going to hang separately when you're trying to compete with a big market like Orlando and like Disney. There's a lot of talk about uh, Ybor City, I guess, having some potential for tourism. And uh, it's my observation that that's one thing that Tampa has that is somewhat different than a lot of cities in Florida, since it's more of a historic area. Do you, do you see a potential there to market that in a different way than the normal Florida tourist attraction? Not just so much a potential, but it's already here. Uh, the one thing that we have that is different than Orlando, Orlando has theme parks, they have attractions, they have high tech, they have all those wonderful new marvelous things to enhance and wrap to your attention, but they don't have a lot of history. The history of this particular area, and there's really only a few areas of the state that have anything similar, maybe us, St. Augustine, and per certain parts of South Florida, the history surrounding Ybor City, the Cuban influence, the original Latin Quarter is unique to the area. Several articles have been written in national publications recently now about how Ybor City is not only has great historical value to the area as a free day walking tour, but now has become the nightlife capital of the southeast, even over South Beach in Miami. So Ybor City is a point of difference. It's a little hard to market Ybor City like Disney markets a pleasure island because you don't have one big corporate entity controlling it. Again, you have a more fragmented type of a product with several different businesses, the Chamber of Commerce pulling those things together. But what we don't have in financial resources, I think we make up for in uniqueness and in spirit. I'm glad that you kind of brought up the idea of marketing because I think sometimes people think you don't have to market your area. How important is that to our tourism industry, the idea of marketing? And how much do we spend compared to other areas? Well, first of all, if you look at the marketing resources we have in this area right now, um, Florida is probably the most competitive uh, state in the United States for tourism among its own destinations. Our budget at the Convention and Visitors Association, including cooperative marketing, is about $4 million. Sounds like a lot of money. The budget in Orlando is up around $19 million. It's not including what Disney spends, what Universal spends. That's just what their Convention and Visitor Bureau budget is, their municipal budget. Miami's is approaching 16. Um, so resource-wise, our resources are significantly smaller compared to some of the other destinations. Some people believe that you don't have to necessarily market to tourists. They have the, um, the, uh, the mentality of build it and they will come. I think we found with some of the struggles we've had, and unfortunately, particularly with the Florida Aquarium recently, that build it and they will come won't necessarily happen. I like to liken it to the Outback Steakhouse mentality. I don't know how many people out there have been to an Outback Steakhouse in recent years, but it's probably one of the most successful restaurant cut chains in the country. It's fast growing, and it takes an hour to two hours to wait every time you go in. Even when you go in now, you put your name in, you're given a pager so you can walk away and come back. With that kind of success, as you wouldn't think Outback would waste money on marketing. How many times do you see their television commercials on TV? Outback still continues to promote because they never want to be in that position where they've lost their market share. We have to take the same approach. When we talk about, I guess, having kind of a vision for the future, which, you know, is kind of what this program has been about, uh, what is your vision as far as tourism goes into areas that we need to expand, or what, where do you see us going? Well, the first thing that we've got to do for tourism, and I take tourism in the convention and tourism markets, is get a downtown hotel built next to the Tampa Convention Center. It's been much written about in the newspapers, but I think most people are aware of the fact that we have a gorgeous convention facility downtown, but we do not have an adequate number of first-class hotel rooms either under one roof or nearby to attract groups of the area. It would also be helpful if uh, a couple of projects were to come out of the ground. Namely, um, there's a talk about the Riverside Hotel being purchased and renovated. That would significantly enhance our efforts, as would um, the Florida Hotel project going through and having a first-class hotel built. We need those projects to take place, first of all. Um, we need more happening in terms of downtown nightlife and entertainment. And I think a lot of that's going to come along the arena is going to be a really strong catalyst downtown with more development happening around the Ice Palace. Our waterfront in the Tampa Bay area, over in St. Pete Clearwater, the waterfront is beautifully developed. In Tampa and Hillsborough County, what's undeveloped is, remains undeveloped. It's our greatest resource. We need to take advantage of it and put the type of activities there, not just that will attract visitors, but will bring in their spending so we can develop things that will help people here local in the area. Down the road, uh, as we begin to grow into the next century, we're going to have to, I think, take better use of our natural resources. We have two of the most beautiful canoeing and fishing rivers in the country, 
the Hillsboro and the Alafi River that a lot of people don't know about. The Hillsboro is becoming very popular. We need to sell that asset. We have outstanding outdoor recreational assets in terms of our lakes as well as our streams and fishing in the bay is very popular. It's becoming more popular too. These are things we need to grow and expand upon so that we make sure we don't want to ruin those those resources. We want to make sure we sell those to people and attract not just the theme park visitors who are coming here for attractions, but people who enjoy the arts and culture and the outdoors as well. We talked with Stewart earlier about the Tampa Bay Partnership. Uh, I guess what I'd like to understand is what type of partnering goes on in, in selling the region, or is it a totally separate effort on the part of Pinellas and Hillsboro? Some separate and some together. Uh, more happening together now than probably has ever happened or has happened in the past. We have joint marketing efforts now in Pinellas County, primarily in international markets, because when you go into the international markets and you point to a map of Florida, a lot of people can't point out where Tampa or the Tampa Bay area even is. So it makes the most sense to try to image and make an impact in the international markets first. Incidentally, the international market spends more money and stays longer, so it makes sense to work together to increase that. It also increases air service to our area. We're going to be undertaking a joint package campaign for the first time this summer. We have been doing Bush Gardens packages that were Hillsborough County oriented, Bush Gardens packages that were Pinellas County oriented, and most recently packages that were Bush Gardens, Florida Aquarium, Museum of Science and Industry, Lowry Park Zoo, etc. We're going to take those campaigns baywide this year, which will more than double, more like triple the amount of advertising we're able to get in the marketplace, get us on regional southeast and state TV, and make a bigger impact. We're starting to do more together in meetings and conventions. Uh, the NCAA Final Four bid for 1999, which was successful, will be at the Thunderdome, was a joint effort. If we do ever achieve something like another Super Bowl, that'll be a Bay Area effort. Attracting those mega events are efforts that require both sides of the Bay to cooperate. So I'm pleased to say, even though we got a long ways to go, you're seeing more cooperation take place all the time. Well, it clearly appears that tourism does contribute to our prosperity, but uh, I guess in, in summarizing, how do you see, again, the impact in the future as, as far as promoting this area as a prosperous area economically? I think, first of all, we're going to have to sell the area more as a Bay Area. We're going to have to work more collectively to compete as a destination. Um, I think we're going to have to continue to develop and build our downtown product in Tampa. I think we're going to have to find more ways to get people into rural areas uh, to promote the area and make it more prosperous. I think we're going to have to find, to, to, to find some ancillary things. We're involved, for example, right now in running the Tampa Film Commission, which is an area that doesn't just bring the traditional thought of low paying jobs of the area, but also brings some of the more high paying jobs of the area and helps image the area. We need to take a national approach and finally, we need to make sure that our tourism product development enhances the local environment and makes it a positive experience for the people who live here and not an inconvenience to them. Right. Well, I'd like to thank my guests, Jim Clark and Stuart Rogel, for being with us today as we explored ways of cultivating prosperity within our community. Please join us next month when we'll talk about producing balanced growth. We'll be discussing how we can provide new guidelines for suburban development and preserve rural environments. Thank you for tuning in.